Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. Well, it is budget day in Newfoundland and Labrador. And today, Finance Minister Tom Osborne laid out a stay the course budget. There are no dramatic cuts or any major increases in spending. Here's where we are as a province. Total spending for the upcoming fiscal year is estimated to be $8.36 billion. But we're only bringing in just over $7.5 billion. So the projected deficit is $683 million. That's lower than was projected last year. But that also means our debt continues to accumulate. This year's estimate, $15.5 billion. And that means the average debt per person in Newfoundland and Labrador is not far off $30,000. So joining us now is Hollis Wells financial planner Larry Short. So Larry, what is your takeaway here? Uh, well, there are two key points. One is that it's basically um, a nothing burger budget. There's no meat in this. There's uh, a few sweet trinkets that sort of uh, makes it easier to swallow, but there's, not, there's nothing that really changes from last year. There's not any dramatic uh, there's no increases in taxes and the like. The only caution is that with the deficit rising as much as it is, the, the forecast that the government has used um, it does not see, foresee um, a potential for a recession. We usually get a recession about once every four to five years. We haven't had one in 10. So there's a bit of a danger there. All right, Larry, thank you very much. And we will come back to you uh, later in the show for more analysis. Well, today's budget also confirmed something we first reported yesterday. Government will move to create a new crown corporation to help drive what's expected to be dramatic growth in the oil and gas industry. And that means a big shakeup for Nalcor Energy. Here now's Terry Roberts is live with more on that story. So Terry, what's the plan for oil and gas? Uh, yeah, Debbie. Well, we all know that the province wants to double oil, pro uh, oil production in this province over the next dozen years or so, and it made a move today that it hopes will ensure there's no distraction from that goal. So what's going to happen is they're going to spin off uh, Nalcor Oil and Gas Division into its very own separate Crown Corporation, reporting directly to the Department of Natural Resources. Now, here's how that decision was explained today. Right now, our oil and gas company that holds equity for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, that it does a lot of the exploration work for Newfoundland and Labrador, is, within a, is a subsidiary of an overall corporation. And that overall corporation is very focused on electricity. We want to ensure as a province that we give absolute 100% attention to this uh, industry. Now, government stressed today that this is not about separating uh, Nalcor's oil and gas division from the uh, very troubled Muskrat Falls project. This is about, they say, and ensuring that the province will maximize the benefits from its oil industry. Now, as we all know, there are less, no less than 85 applications right now for exploratory wells in our offshore. Uh, that's part of nearly three billion in exploration commitments by oil companies. The province expects about a billion dollars in oil revenue this year, some very critical money for our uh, coffers, and millions more in equity payments from ownership stakes in the three oil projects. So Terry, what was the reaction to the split at Nalcor? Well, uh, I spoke to some uh, opposition politicians today and uh, the reaction was uh, mixed. The oil and gas sector under Nalcor the past number of years has considerable success. It's continued to grow. There's been investments made. We're seeing that return. We're seeing return on our equity investments. Uh, you know, but why we're doing this right now, there's not a lot of detail. I think this budget is a lot of smoke and mirrors, and I think this is just another element of it. Where's the proof that this is going to be good for the province? Maybe, maybe it will be, but I have no idea. And for them to put it in the budget without an explanation, without the evidence that this is a good thing to do, I think is not responsible. Now, this, uh, this is not going to happen overnight. This, uh, we're probably going to need some, uh, we will need some legislative changes for this. This could be weeks and months before this happens. And we still don't know an official name for this new Crown Corporation. And Siobhan Cody gave every indication today that the uh, 
uh, the current uh, Vice President of Nalcor Oil and Gas, Jim Keating. He will very likely uh, be the CEO of this new Crown Corporation. And this wasn't the only um, news today relevant to Nalcor. We also learned a lot more about what the Muskrat Falls inquiry is going to cost us. Ariana? Yeah, that's right. We finally have a price tag attached to how much the Muskrat Falls inquiry will cost. This year and next year, the province will spend $33.7 million on an inquiry. Uh, to put this in comparison, that's far more than the money earmarked this year for the development of the West Coast Hospital, the healthcare center in Springdale, and towards the replacement of the Waterford Hospital. Also in comparison, just $1 million will be spent this year on an inquiry into Innu children in care. But Finance Minister Tom Osborne and Opposition Leader Paul Davis both agree that this is in the province's best interest. As Finance Minister, I can say that there's a lot of places we can use $33 million, but if we learn from the mistakes that were made at Muskrat Falls and why the projections were so off and why the timing of completion of the project was so off, and, and we can use what we learn from that inquiry to ensure that if we do any other projects in the future, we don't make the same mistakes, it, it might not seem like a good investment today, but it will be a good investment in the future. I think it's money well spent. It's a lot of money. Uh, you don't make a hire yet, but I, I anticipated it was going to cost tens and tens of millions of dollars to carry out. So, Ariana, what about the average person in this province? Is there anything in the budget that could affect their pocketbook? Well, Carolyn, there's not a whole lot of new information. This very much is a controversy avoiding budget. There is a $3,000 tax relief credit earmarked for search and rescue personnel that will come into effect in 2019. The province is rolling back the auto insurance tax 2% on January 1st, 2019, and there will be further 1% reductions in each of the next three years. House insurance, however, will remain at 15%. And as the government announced yesterday, there is a new program to help people buy their own homes with $3,000 grants from the government. Now there is a little bit of news coming out of the Department of Transportation and Works. Minister Steve Crocker says that the Team Guju extension will have vehicles on it by the end of the year, but after seven years of construction, it still will not totally be complete. We're at a stage where we're ready for the lighting and the concrete median and uh, then there's some tie-ins with the city's stormwater system, but it's certainly our anticipation to complete the Team Guju this season. When you say complete, you mean to Topsail Road? To Topsail Road, yes. You should see activity back on site there uh, within the next number of weeks. Yeah, so no new fees, no new taxes, but then again, no new big projects either. Reporting live from Confederation Building, I'm Arianna Kelland for Here and Now. To the justice system now, there's more money going to the office of the chief medical examiner. An additional $536,000 will bring the total budget to $1.5 million. Next year, the province will begin to spend half a million annually on CERT, the Serious Incident Response Team. And finally, there's $200,000 for a previously announced drug treatment court in St. John's. Well, despite the tough times, the province is actually spending more money on education with a real push on better reading skills. Here are now is Ramona Deering is at Confederation Building joining us now. So Ramona, what can you tell us? Well, Education Minister Dale Kirby got to announce new spending today. Just under $7 million for the year ahead, including a pilot project starting in September in 40 schools. Reading specialists are being brought in to work with students. There will be 104 of them within three years, and Kirby says there will also be extra help for teachers. Teaching and learning assistants will be able to help teachers with grading. You know, they'll be able to help teachers with all of the functions that they carry out. There has been friction between Kirby and the Teachers Association in the past, but NLTA President Dean Ingram is happy to hear about these extra supports. I think in this fiscal climate, which we all recognize that the province is in a difficult fiscal situation, seeing $6.9 million in infused education will certainly be very helpful. 
So the changes are all about following the recommendations in the task force on improving educational outcomes, and that includes inclusive education. We'll have to see if they really do take pressure off students, uh, teachers rather, and if they mean that students do better with the three R's in the future. Reporting live for Here and Now, I'm Ramona Deering in St. John's. Well, there's more education news to tell you about in the budget. There's money to build new schools in Paradise and Coley's Point to finish an extension to Mobile Central High. There's also money to plan a new Francophone school in St. John's and to plan a replacement for Beta Spear Academy, which burned down last January. And there's money to repair and maintain existing schools. But there was no announcement about Bishopfield Elementary in St. John's. Education Minister Dale Kirby is still waiting for an engineer's report, but he said there is money to replace the building if necessary. A government set aside $4 million for Memorial University to maintain its tuition freeze for students from this province. But the Canadian Federation of Students is concerned a $9 million hit to Munn's operating budget could mean an increase in fees for international students who have been excluded from the freeze. Well, students have fought really hard over uh, 20 years to make sure that the tuition freeze for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians is kept in place. So we are uh, happy to see uh, the results of that, of that work. However, uh, this budget has failed to protect once again international and out of province students. At the same time, recognizing the importance of newcomers to offset our Schengen and aging population and that we need it more than ever in this province to make sure that we attract and retain skilled workers. Uh, so instead of banded solutions, we need a transformative vision of post-secondary education, which means, uh, which means uh, funding uh, to the uh, operating grants of both of our institutions. In other news tonight, unionized workers at the IOC mine in Labrador City are on the picket line tonight. They went on strike early this morning in a dispute with the company over pensions and sick leave. Here now is Allison Sampson reports. The strike is on after 92% of workers voted last night to reject the final offer from the company. IOC steelworkers in Labrador City began their morning by warming their hands over barrel fires on picket lines. They're standing their ground in three locations in Labrador City. Proudest day of my life here, standing on the picket line with my son. The IOC main gate, the railway, and the entrance to Wabush 3 are all blocked by members of the United Steelworkers Union Local 5795. They don't like the company's practice of hiring temporary workers in place of permanent employees. I have my husband, me, and my son. We all live in the same household, and it's going, it's going to affect us, but we're going to stand up for what we are entitled to. One man told me his fear is that every person who retires will be replaced by a temporary worker until unionized employees are outnumbered. Workers are also fighting for benefits such as dental and prescriptions. Last night, in a show of force, more than 500 workers led by union president Ron Thomas marched to the main gates. Thomas says they're looking for a fair contract, and they mean business. We're here prepared to stay as long as it takes before we can get a fair contract. A statement released by the Iron Ore Company of Canada says, IOC remains open to continuing discussions and finding a way to work together to sign a collective agreement that will benefit all. Allison Sampson, CBC News, Labrador City. And coming up just a little later in our program, I'll speak to the mayor of Labrador City, Wayne Button, about the impact the strike could have on the town. A man acquitted more than five years ago of killing his estranged wife went on trial in St. John's today for allegedly assaulting and choking another woman. Ray Newman is accused of assaulting his girlfriend last September in Paradise. Here now's Gwen Payette reports. Ray Newman's name has been in the news for a long time in this province, since the body of Chrissy Predden Newman was found in her apartment in Airport Heights in St. John's in January of 2007. Her throat had been slashed. Today, her uncle was on hand for the start of this new trial involving Newman. Just to speak to Ray Newman's character, I came into court today, he walked past me, and he smiled and he asked me, did I bring a rope with me? Newman never went to trial for Chrissy Predham's death. In 2012, a judge ruled police had violated his rights and acquitted Newman. He's on trial now for allegedly assaulting his girlfriend, Nicole Young, at their place in Paradise last September. 
Young told the court they had been fighting for months and that this was the last straw and that he wasn't going to lay hands on her again. She said he held her against a wall and choked her until she saw Black and that when she snapped out of it, she hit him in the nose and he let her go. Young admits they had both had a lot to drink and that she can't remember what the fight was about. But she says Newman had a look of rage about him. Pretty overwhelming when you're here listening to another lady, you know, talking about she feared for her life. Harvey says what he went through after the death of his niece took its toll on him. I didn't know how to cope with everything that was going on. And uh, throughout that time, I, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm embarrassed, but throughout that time, I got so low that I, uh, I tried to take my life after, after all this. Young finished giving her evidence today. The case is back in court in mid-May. Newman's lawyer, Brian Wenzel, says that at this stage, he anticipates that Newman will be taking the stand in his own defense. Glenn Payette, CBC News, St. John's. Well, time now to bring in Ryan uh, with our first look at the weather. Fabulous day today. Can we have another one, please? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> Not for a while, anyway. Uh, I do suspect there were a few extended lunch breaks today. <laughs> yeah. uh, and why not? Yeah. We've been starved for this weather. <laughs> uh, what a day. Not just the sunshine, but the light winds. And, you know, with that sun getting higher and higher in, in the sky, uh, that had us uh, warming up quite nicely. Have a look at some of these highs today. Double digits today in Terra Nova, in Corner Brook. 9.9 here at the weather station on top of the CBC building here on the parkway. Eight officially at the airport, but yeah, double digits, at least flirting with double digits from St. John's to Cornerbrook today. Seven, eight, nine degrees in the Happy Valley Goose Bay region, but yes, uh, all good things must come to an end, and they will come to an end in the form of a uh, messy system coming in tomorrow. The freezing rain will be a factor for most of us, but mostly along that north coast where we have freezing rain warnings in effect. Uh, that's where the freezing rain is going to be lingering longer as we roll through the later parts of tomorrow. Very quiet through tonight. Even tomorrow morning early on, 6 a.m., that freezing rain likely just underway for the Buren Peninsula and the Southern Avalon. It looks like through the morning commute that freezing rain becomes an issue for St. John. So uh, do be prepared to encounter some icy conditions tomorrow morning. Leave yourself a little bit of extra time. And then that freezing rain threat really extends into central parts of Newfoundland tomorrow afternoon and lingers into tomorrow evening again along that north coast. We'll break down your timeline in more detail and talk about what's ahead for the next 48 in just a few minutes. Up next, I'll tell you what wasn't in the budget today and what the people of Cornerbrook think about the future of the pulp and paper mill.
Well, today's provincial budget is based in no small part on a steady economy. One major challenge that was not mentioned in the budget is the state of the pulp and paper mill in Corner Brook. Here and now is Colleen Connors has more tonight on how people are reacting. Colleen? Well, the Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper Mill behind me here tonight is owned by Kruger and it's now facing a 32% tariff on all newsprint that's headed for the U.S. That's $30 million annually that they now face. And today in the budget, the provincial government made no mention of any financial help towards the mill. Now, this mill here is facing the highest amount of, of duties in Canada. The, it's affecting about 300 direct jobs, dozens affected in the logging and the forestry industry. Now, Kruger has a $110 million loan from the province, and they've been paying interest on that since 2014. But the Premier has said that Kruger has not asked for any money to help with these new high duties. And the Cornerbrook Board of Trade president certainly hopes they never have to. Responding to that may not be realistic in this budget. It's something they may have to do a little later. Uh, also, given the fact they haven't had a chance to really discuss this with Cornwall Pulp and Paper probably fully is another factor. And hopefully they're working with the federal government to get some of these countervailing duties lifted so it may not be as much an issue as, as we think it may be. And of course, the two biggest industries in Cornerbrook is the mill, of course, and the hospital. And people are always asking, when is the new hospital coming to Cornerbrook? That's been promise, promised by the provincial government. It was mentioned briefly in the budget today that $400,000 will go towards the long-term care center that will be built on the site next to the new hospital. And $8 million will go towards the ongoing development of that Cornerbrook hospital. But Golding doesn't think that's a whole lot of money. It's good to see forward momentum. I was hoping for a little more than that. That's just enough for some engineering work and some consulting work. I would like to see bricks and mortar, like some groundbreaking in the next year or two. So I'm looking forward to a much better uh, announcement next year. The provincial government has promised that construction of the Cornerbrook Hospital, the new hospital, will start in 2019 with the doors opening in 2023. Live in Cornerbrook tonight, I'm Colleen Connors for Here and Now. Well, one of the fiscal positives the finance minister pointed to today was the province's mining sector. In 2018, the mining sector is forecasted to employ 6,000 people and have uh, $3.4 billion in mineral shipments. But that forecast was done before the strike at IOC began today in Labrador City. And we have reached Mayor Wayne Button right now. So, uh, Mayor, the IOC operation is the biggest employer in your area, about 1,400 workers impacted. With the strong strike mandate the union was given, how surprised are you that they walked? Um, if you were to ask me about three weeks ago, Debbie, I would say surprised. Uh, but now, over the last couple of days, uh, hearing how things went negotiations, uh, I'm not too surprised at all, to be honest. So let's talk about that. Uh, what was the, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back? You talk with these workers. Your spouse is one of them, I understand. What are they telling you? Uh, mostly there's two or three things in the contract they wanted. Uh, you know, they wanted uh, a more cap on their medical. Their medical treatment is capped at $40,000 right now. So to put that in perspective, if someone were to get diabetes or MS or something serious, uh, their medication runs out pretty quick. Uh, they also had, uh, they didn't want any temporary workers in their CBA agreement. Uh, so that's probably the two main issues. You know, uh, it actually seems like they're pretty close. You know, if you were to change maybe two or three things, we might actually have something else on the table here. Well, in the meantime, while this continues, what is going to be the impact not only on those workers, but for Labrador City economically and socially? Well, it will drastically affect the impact. I mean, as you stated, almost 1,400 uh, employees. We only have a, a town with a population of about 8,000. So when you think about that in perspective, almost 25% of your population is not working at the moment. And then it trickles down to everything right from, you know, uh, revenue from small businesses and then contracting companies as well that rely on the mine. So eventually it will pretty much have a, a fairly drastic effect in terms of, uh, you know, uh, culturally, like you said, you know, it may cause some anxiety and some stress in people here in town, uh, which is sad to say. I mean, this is a town that was on your news just about a year ago about some of the mental health issues we had here. So hopefully it doesn't trickle down to be that severe. 
So Mayor Button, this is a worrisome time. Um, and you know, after some rough times for the industry in recent years, I think hopes were pretty high for a turnaround in Labrador City's fortunes. There was a new open pit mine in development. What's uh, happening now as of today? Uh, only based on some people I've talked to, uh, uh, I know Walrus 3 is probably at a standstill right now. Uh, Dexter hauled out uh, a lot of their main equipment, and a lot of employees uh, were flown out, fly in, fly out. Uh, there was an extension for Maggie Pitt that was supposed to start as well, so I guess that's all going to be stalled. Uh, so in terms of IOC, I guess everything right now is just stalled until we find out what's going to happen with the strike. Mayor Wayne Button, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll certainly be watching the developments. Anytime. Thank you, Debbie. will overcome the fiscal challenges that our province now faces. Up next, the province's finance minister talks about government's spending plan. All right, Ryan's back with a look at the weather forecast. But before we get to that, you uh, had a special visit today at That's one right. of the schools. That's right. Yeah, big shout out to uh, the grade fives at Octagon Pond Elementary. Uh, pretty new school there in Paradise and a uh, great group of students. They listened well, lots of great questions. 
and they even uh, made me a nice card to, uh, to thank me for the visit that they all signed. Uh, but there was one request at the bottom. <laughs> Give us another snow day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess they didn't get as many this year as they wanted. One, oh. one snow day. I tell you, the, the school visits have been a tough bracket for me to this tour uh, that I usually do through the winter season. Typically, the teachers are pretty happy, especially over the last few winters. One snow day all winter, the kids and especially the teachers, not so pleased. <laughs> no, and they blamed you. Uh, well, I think everybody takes it all in stride, but uh, I think they feel like they can vent to me a little bit more. <laughs> mm -hmm. No snow days coming, unfortunately. Uh, and we're oh, no, I'm glad. The season. <laughs> yeah. uh, though uh, freezing rain will be a bit of an issue tomorrow in the metro region and especially for the north coast. And let's have a look where we have those freezing rain warnings in effect. Bonavista North towards the Bay of Exploits and the Green Bay White Bay area. This is where there's the best chance of seeing some significant ice buildup with that freezing rain and those temperatures holding near near freezing winds coming in off the North Atlantic. There's pack ice here, of course. And so with that uh, wind coming in off the ice uh, temperatures, better chance of holding near the freezing mark and that freezing rain lingering right through tomorrow evening. Rec House is under a wind warning. Some gusts near 110 ramping up through this evening. High pressure again dominating today. What a beautiful day and what a beautiful system this is. If you're a weather weenie like me, boy, it doesn't get much better than this. Watching a low off to the south, mwah, looking very nice as this is winding up and uh, throwing all kinds of uh, cloud cover now. That high cloud building in today and that cloud will get lower and lower through this evening into the overnight. Precip into Nova Scotia tonight and then onto the doorstep for Newfoundland as we roll throughout tomorrow. The green and the yellow here, these are the periods of rain that will follow that freezing rain on the leading edge of this. And as we roll into the Thursday time period, that low will take its time. The center of the system not moving through until Thursday, which will bring another round of rain in for eastern parts of Newfoundland in particular. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Here's how your morning outlook looks. Best chance of freezing rain along that Buren Peninsula and Southern Avalon uh, for 6, 7 a.m. It then works, works northward into the St. John's metro region as we roll throughout the morning. And here's your regional timeline for tomorrow. Any freezing rain done by lunchtime. So it looks like the best chance for metro will be in that uh, 8, 9, 10 a.m. time period towards the lunchtime hour. And then the early afternoon, it looks like those... Uh, Temperatures starting to rise, especially for inland areas and the periods of rain taking over. A solid 10, 20, maybe 25 millimeters of rain shooting through here tomorrow afternoon. So it is going to be a wet one. The rain also will be then bringing in the fog as well. We'll see some fog patches into the afternoon. Temperatures steady near 2 with right along the coast. Inland areas will get to as warm as 4, 5, and 6 degrees away from the water tomorrow. And that, uh, again, for central parts of Newfoundland, it's going to be a very quiet start. The freezing rain, very patchy early on in the morning and then into the lunchtime hour. Better chance that uh, periods, the, those periods of freezing rain will be moving in and then over to rain mid to late afternoon, but holding on, as I mentioned, longer for the Bay of Exploits back towards Green Bay, White Bay area, right into tomorrow evening as temperatures will be steady around the freezing mark. For the west coast, increasing clouds, and again, that freezing rain working through by lunchtime, done for the southwest coast, lingering a little bit longer, possibly for Corner Brook, the Humber Valley, into the mid, maybe even late afternoon for places like the Humber Valley before that warm air really uh, sinks down to the surface. Now, as we move into the uh, northern peninsula region, pretty quiet. A few late day flurries for St. Anthony, Port of Schwa, building clouds for the Straits and southeastern parts of Labrador. And as we roll into the north coast, a pretty nice day here. Temps on the plus side, a mix of sun and cloud, just a few flurries in Labrador City. And again, a look ahead to Thursday. Periods of rain for the Avalon and the Buren as the center of that low tracks just to our south and east with shower chances for most, even some wet flurries mixing back in for Corner Brook and the southeast. We'll talk more about this and your Easter weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Well, we return to our budget day coverage now. As we mentioned earlier, there are no big spending cuts and no major spending increases. Here's part of how Finance Minister Tom Osborne explained his approach this afternoon during his budget speech in the House of Assembly. Mr. Speaker, there have been many who said that Newfoundland and Labrador could not withstand the fiscal crisis we inherited. Those individuals underestimate the spirit of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians and our ability to overcome challenges. Here, here. We have reduced our deficit from the projected $2.7 billion to little more than $800 million today. 
we are on target to return to surplus despite the volatility of oil prices. We cannot take such severe actions as massive job reductions or cuts to services as they would have far-reaching consequences on our already challenged economy due to the winding down of major industrial projects. Our economy stabilizes coming off these projects. Employment remains one of our key challenges and we are addressing this head on. So there were no surprises in the budget for labor unions in the province. Government had promised no job cuts, that the size and cost of the public service will be whittled away through attrition. Union leaders are pleased with the steady as she goes approach. I think it's a measured, a steady end right now, uh, and that's something that the labor movement, NAEP has been saying for a number of years since that doom and gloom budget of 2015. Steady is the goal. I mean, that's what we've been asking two years ago. We were pretty upset about the budget. Uh, but the one thing, the one question I really have about this budget is, what is it doing for the greater population, and especially those who are hurting right now? I sort of was trying to find a word. I, it's sort of flat, in, in my opinion. You know, there wasn't a whole lot to get excited about, but there's not much there to be upset about as well, which I think, you know, is is the message that government has been giving us for the last couple of months. They wanted to keep things pretty steady. Now, the groups that represent business may be pleased with a cut in the payroll tax, but are disappointed that government spending has not been reined in. Everybody that we've talked to, all the economists that we've worked with, they have said the exact same thing. Look, you, you have to get your spending under control. And government's plan is to maintain spending over the life of their, over life of their plan, essentially maintain it uh, where it is and rely on increasing oil and, and taxation to do that. And that's a, that's a risky plan in our view. Overall, we're still looking at the, go at the government to make the difficult decisions and to get their spending under control. So that's a disappointment with us. They're still carrying a deficit. The deficit is larger than they had pr uh, projected last year. So again, that, that's still a big issue for our members. Well, coming up next, our guest uh, Larry Short will join us again for a deeper analysis of today's budget. And Larry Short is back with us for more analysis of today's budget. Thanks so much for being here with us, Larry. It's a pleasure. Now, we've heard a lot of budget details, and I want you to zoom out a little bit and um, 
What hits you most about this budget and the direction it's taking? Uh, so it, this really is a budget that is a state of course. It's not one that is making any major changes. It's not one that's either raising uh, or cutting taxes. So we're, so we're not really seeing, you know, it's, it's, it's not particularly inspirational. Mm -hmm. It's um, here's wh where we are. There's a, we're shaving a bit off the, uh, the spending. And, uh, and although it sounds a bit strange to say that we're only uh, going uh, into, into deficit by another 600 million more, it sounds difficult to even say that, <laughs> it feels better than when we were a couple of years ago at 2 billion a year. Are they are they uh, relying too much on the federal government? Uh, there is money coming in, obviously, from the federal government. There's uh, the biggest impact we're still seeing is oil, and it's not just oil royalties; it's also oil employment. Mm -hmm. So it, the oil is still taking up something in the order of about 28 percent of our economy, and if indeed the oil forecast uh, forecast prices are realized, then yeah, we're in, we're improving slowly. What about some of those uh, big picture goals that we hear government talking about yeah. a lot, like attracting more people to the province, keeping people in the province, attracting more business? What's in the budget that addresses so, that? Well, not a lot. See, and, and, and we're also competing against the rest of the country where you have things like, you know, in uh, December figures were showing us that the unemployment rate in British Columbia was 4.6%. I mean, so, you know, jobs galore. Uh, uh, high wages, mm -hmm. right, and and places like Manitoba. I mean, the vast majority of the of the provinces are better shape economically than we are right now. So, trying to attract people into the province and attract uh, immigrants into the province is incredibly difficult uh, when you have you know better wages, better housing, better health care. Uh, you know, so it's it's difficult. And what about keeping young people here? Yeah. So the three thousand dollar. Um, you know, first uh, or first purchase uh, that helps, uh, but we need more of that. And 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 the helping with the the daycare that is that is positive. We need more of that. But we again, we're kind of snipping at the edges as opposed to really making a wholesale um, major change that will really turn people's uh, thoughts around. There were no tax reductions today. It's something you referenced this morning in the reporter's yeah. lockup, and you gave an example. Manitoba yeah. is cutting. Uh, why is that so important? Again, because it is much more attractive then. If you're attracting businesses, um, it's, it's the corporate tax rate being lowered always ha helps an attractive business. But the personal tax rate also means people are more attracted to a particular area. So it's another example of how we're being outcompeted by the rest of the country. There are some goodies in the budget. There's uh, you know, more money for teaching and learning assistance in schools, Which, yeah. more money for mental health uh, in communities. Uh, so who does this budget please? Um, so again, as I put at the beginning, there's not a lot of meat, mm -hmm. but there's a few sweet pieces. And that's, and that's what, what I was getting at, was that there's a couple of pieces that are nice to see, but we need more of it. We'd like to have more of it, but the government's hands are constrained. I mean, if they're trying to cut back on the spending, they can't come out with a wholesale um, you know, expenditure that is really, really large. Is there anyone who will be unhappy by? No, it's, this is not really offending anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. and just to uh, clue things up, Larry, what would you like to have seen in this budget that's not there? Uh, the key thing I'd love to see is, look, we've had a number of years here where uh, we've been told that we have the, the highest debt per capita in the country. Um, that it's been a lot of gloom and a lot of doom, but we also need to recognize that we have a lot of advantages here. And, uh, you know, we, we have a, a landmass the size of Japan, the population of Hamilton, Ontario. So you can say that we have the highest debt, but we also have the highest resources per capita of any place in the world. We're uniquely positioned between North America and Europe, so that, uh, you know, with deep water ports, with copper, nickel, zinc, uh, iron ore, cobalt, I mean, all of the things that the world needs. So there is a brighter future out there. Love to see a bit of an inspirational leadership sort of uh, conversation of, uh, from the, the government to say, here is, here's the vision that uh, we're moving towards and there will be a better tomorrow. And, that, and maybe they've been just a little bit too set, set back in, in, on their heels. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Larry Short, for joining us with your analysis. It's my pleasure. Tasty food and tasty tunes. Up next, we'll tell you about the big event CBCNL is hosting at the Delta in St. John's this weekend, and you won't want to miss it.
It is time now for our Young Athlete of the Day, and today our athlete comes to us from the Happy Valley Goose Bay area. Nine-year-old Jackson Hallwell enjoys his time on the ice playing the forward position with the Black Knights. We hope you had a great season, Jackson. Congratulations on being chosen as today's Young Athlete of the Day. Well, everyone is looking forward to the big event this weekend. And no, I'm not talking about Easter. It's that <laughs> other big event, CBCNL's Tasty Tunes. We're looking forward to both of them. Yeah. But on uh, this uh, program note, we're talking about Saturday, the Delta Hotel, live local musicians, lots of great food. Our fabulous local chefs are Andy Bullman, Christopher Joy, Daryl Hammond, Amy Anthony, and Justine Thompson and here's a sample of their work. We're unique in the sense that we're growing our own microgreens. Nobody else really has that kind of stuff going on, so we have that extra little touch. You, you almost get to see things from seed to plate, which is unheard of. It's so cool. I think doughs are my favorite thing to work with. It's really fun to like feel a dough and be like, that's a good dough. It's a good feeling. When you make something, it's consumed right away and then it's gone and then you can make something new and it's just always something new. We get to work with the freshest farm ingredients. We're, we're so lucky. Well, having a fresh a uh, little green on top definitely makes a big difference, especially in the winter here. Mm -mm. <laughs> that is Saturday evening at the Delta. The Songwriters Circle starts at 4.30 and food will be served at 6. The musicians include Geraldine Hullett of The Once, Janet Cull, and Joanna Barker. And you can still get tickets, but uh, you should move kind of fast because last year the event did sell out pretty quickly. You can uh, get tickets at cbc.ca slash nl. There are $35 each and the money is going to a great cause, the Community Food Sharing Association. And last year we raised raised uh, nearly $10,000 with that. The weather update is brought to you by Belltone Hearing Service St. John's, helping the world hear better. All right, so Easter's almost here, getting those uh, spring feelings, especially after today. And I know uh, you both uh, love to be out in the garden, especially mm -hmm. Stokesy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this picture is uh, just for you. Oh, uh, yay. And Michael didn't say exactly where he took this, but uh, always a good sign anywhere in this province to see the crocuses coming up like that. Lovely. Now the poor crocuses, <laughs> they do take a beating here, don't they? They're tough, they're they, tough. They are tough, but uh, I don't know if there's any other province where they take quite a beating where we get a nice warm day like this and then uh, the mess that's on the way for tomorrow, especially in central parts of Newfoundland. Have a look at the highs today. Again, uh, even some double digits through Nova Scotia today, 10 in Halifax. We were flirting with 10 degrees here in St. John's through central and especially in the Cornerbrook region where the official weather station there did top out at 11. But the clouds are building in and this next system will be moving in through the overnight tonight and into tomorrow. In case you missed it earlier, there is a freezing rain warning in effect for the north coast of Newfoundland. That's where the freezing rain will hang on the longest, but freezing rain on the menu for pretty much everybody, especially across the Avalon Peninsula tomorrow morning, up the northeast coast and into central parts of Newfoundland for the afternoon. Rain and fog take over for the Avalon and across the south coast through the afternoon hours as the freezing rain hangs out for the north coast a little bit longer. By tomorrow evening, everybody's into that warm air minus the Northern Peninsula where we still have that wet snow mixing in. That tracks into southeastern parts of Labrador for Thursday. And that same low then finally starts to track in and just south of us as we roll into the Thursday time period. And that will bring periods of rain and more fog on the menu for Thursday. And then that departs and a bit of a break as we roll into your good Friday time period. If you are traveling on Friday, I'm sure many of you will be. It looks like the Friday morning time period will be the best for traveling across the province and even into Labrador. As we roll into the afternoon, we will have to watch this next system which does look set to roll in from the south. This is the long range forecast projection and you can see where it will move in as we move into the Friday evening overnight into Saturday time period with a bit of some snow mixing to rain. Saturday afternoon, bit of a break, still some unsettled weather hanging out in the form of some light snow across uh, Labrador. 
Another brief uh, break as we roll into the late Saturday into Sunday time period, and it looks like our next system then rolls in for Sunday night and into Monday. Again, a little bit of an, another mix maker, it appears, for Newfoundland, but most of us will see a mix from snow over to rain and more snow, the light looking set for Labrador. So a couple of systems to watch Friday into Saturday, Sunday into Monday, and uh, we will keep an eye on obviously the, the setup beyond that. But uh, the general theme here, temperatures riding above the seasonal mark. We should be in that uh, three, two to three degree range right now for this time of year. Certainly riding above that with these systems tracking in. We're getting into the warm sectors with most of these. And so uh, uh, we will obviously keep you posted. But right now, not looking too bad for travel as we roll through the Easter weekend. And the Labrador, again, keeping an eye on some potential for some snow for Saturday and again on, uh, on Monday. But overall, not a bad looking seven day forecast there as well. Of course, another update 24 hours from now uh, before you hit the roads this Easter weekend. Debbie. Thanks, Ryan. In national and international news, a Canadian whistleblower testified today before a British parliamentary committee about a data firm based in Victoria, B.C. Chris Wiley claims aggregate IQ bragged about influencing elections around the world. Aggregate IQ in part because it was set up and works within the auspices of Cambridge Analytica, um, you know, uh, inherited a lot of the, the company culture of total disregard for the law. Wiley says he believes it is reasonable to conclude that cheating in the Brexit vote may have altered the outcome. Anger over that horrific mall fire in Siberia reached a boiling point in Russia today. Thousands of people gathered in Kimero, uh, Kimerova protesting for hours. They're demanding an independent investigation into the fire and calling for the resignation of local officials, even Vladimir Putin, over the corruption and safety violations that made it so deadly. Officials say 64 people died, 41 of them children. But many residents believe authorities are hiding the real, much higher death toll. The Russian president visited the city today but avoided the protesters. He met with injured victims instead he declared tomorrow a national day of mourning our viewer <laughs> picture of the day how nice was today well this is how nice today was this was taken today uh, can you guess the beach well hmm. there's sand so that's not outer cove middle cove area but that's the, right hmm. it is eastern sand? newfoundland that's what i'll give you a clue what did oh, you say eastern. debbie I know, Carolyn. I just heard Rod Dobbins say Salmon Cove. <laughs> Pretty good guess. Find out if he's right after the break. Nice pup.
Well, Montreal is turning to some old-fashioned help as it culls some 4,000 infested trees on Mount Royal. Jack, you see here, is one of two Belgian draft horses the city is testing out. They're removing trees infested by the emerald ash borer. The city opted for the horses instead of using heavy equipment in hard to access areas. The hope is they'll cause a lot less damage than the machines would. 200 trees have to be cut down by the end of the week. Then the work has to stop because of the start of the bird nesting season. What a beautiful horse. Yeah. Well, when a storm drain backed up in British Columbia's interior, a plumbing crew chalked up the ongoing flooding issue to a sand clog. Yeah, what was, holy cow, let's go, what, wow. But when they started to investigate, they realized the root of the problem was something else altogether. Oh my goodness. In fact, it was a willow tree root that had grown to fill the entire width of the pipe. It took these uh, guys about two hours to get it out. In the end, the root stretched 12 <laughs> meters long. A couple of words they're using to describe it, alien and anaconda. <laughs> As one plumber uh, said, 35 years on the job, but he's never seen anything quite so Jurassic. Yeah, that's looks amazing. like a giant hairball. <laughs> I didn't realize willow trees were that resilient. Wow. <laughs> cool stuff there. Uh, okay, beautiful day today, and uh, Rod Dobbin, our switcher director, correctly guessed uh, this picture. Uh, we go to eastern Newfoundland and here to the Avalon and the beautiful spot that, uh, again, will be packed in the summer. doesn't look quite so busy today at Salmon Cove Sands, but uh, Barb Parsons and her dog Bella went to the beach and uh, enjoyed uh, this beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, so thanks to Barb for passing this along. Boy, that just gets the <laughs> oh, it could warm be thoughts going. It could be 20 <laughs> degrees there. The picture looks so lovely, the sun and everything. Mm -hmm. Soon. 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 <laughs> 20 degrees <laughs> soon. <laughs> Well, that it will do it for us. It's been yeah. a busy budget day, busy with the weather forecast, with setting up the Easter weekend. Yep. And uh, hope you have a great night. Digest everything. and <laughs> Lots more to talk about in the coming days, I'm sure. sure. See you tomorrow. Good, Good night. night.